Hello, welcome to Storytale Festival 2021. And you, we're joined today by Alex, who is going to um, talk about her brilliant book, Funny Bums and Freaky Beaks. Before we kick off, just want to remind you that you can enter a competition to win uh, either Shrew with a Flu or Oscar's Tower with Flowers by leaving a comment on this event. Alex also has her own competition to win a copy of her book, which we'll tell you about in a bit. So keep your ears um, peeled for that. It's not the right thing to say, is it? But there we go. Uh, and if you don't, uh, if you haven't got time to watch all this today or you want to watch another time, this will be up on YouTube shortly. So you can watch at your leisure there and, um, you know, stop it, pause it, leave comments, whatever you want to do. Um, and also just quickly to say that we will be putting information on, on our website so keep um you can keep up to date with what we're doing via there and join our um mailing list but we'll talk about that more at the end so alex you have written a brilliant fun book that we love in our house um funny bums and freaky beaks all about the diversity of wild animals from all over the world um so do you want to kick us off with your book thank you ellie Hello everyone, hello and welcome to the big people and the little people and welcome to those with the missing teeth and knobbly knees, those with the wonky toes and the spotty snotty noses, the hairy hairy ones and the no hair ones, you're all welcome here. I'm going to talk about some of my favourite fabulously freaky animals and share some of their clever tricks from our book, Funny Bums Freaky Beaks. And if you're feeling autistic, there's a chance to win the book. As you might imagine, this book is about why living things look so different. Funny, strange, peculiar, perhaps scary, perhaps. Their weird features have amazing stories. So this book is all about why we love them. Have you ever noticed an animal with a strange tail or a funny toes or an odd nose? Some animals have freaky beaks, weird ears, funny bums, extraordinary eyes, peculiar tongues or other unusual features. And many of those features are there for good reasons, often surprising reasons. What might seem odd to us is just right for another animal. <clears throat> it often helps them live better and have more babies. Over thousands of years, their strangeness can become more extreme if the funny feature makes them more successful. And this is called evolution. And it's why we see such a variety in how animals look and behave. Here are some examples. Let's begin with the mandrel. Why are you laughing? What are you laughing at? My bum? Well, it may look funny to you, but to a male mandrel like me, this bottom has some jolly good uses. First, it tells other males not to mess around with me. They know we important older chaps have the brightest blue and red behinds. Second, female mandrels think my radiant rear is devastatingly handsome. So the brighter it is, the more chance I've got of finding a mate. Third, these lovely colours mean I can be spotted through the leaves when I'm up in a tree. And that's rather handy when we mandrels are in a big troop. Fourth, it's nice and comfy for sitting on. Thank you very much. Here are some other animals with remarkable rear ends. Well, the sea cucumber, this one here, must have one of the most talented bottoms of all. First, it breathes through it. Secondly, it shoots its guts out through its bum to deal with predators. The intestines come out looking like strings of spaghetti and they form sticky nets that tangle up crabs and other creatures. And thirdly, it's got teeth on its bum. And they're there to keep other animals out because animals like hiding inside a sea cucumber's bottom. Let's have a look at another animal. This one has a freaky beak. My beak is unique. I'm a duck-billed platypus. 
You may think I go around with a shovel stuck on my face. And in a way, I suppose I do. But you won't get to glimpse it often because I'm shy. I hide in the water and I come out at night. I'm a mammal, but I've unkindly been called a freak of nature because I lay eggs like a bird and I have a beautiful duck-like beak. In fact, my bill's flat shape helps me swim quickly and it's perfect for scooping up insects and shellfish and worms from the water and from the mud in rivers and lakes. It also has an extra trick. It can sense electric signals made by the animals that I like to eat. And that means I can find them even in dark places. So are we freaky just because we're beaky? Well, just wait until you get an eye for some of my beautiful friends. Let's have another one. This time, I'm not going to tell you what the animal is. Let's see if you can guess. Perplexing nets. The animal kingdom is full of beautiful sights, but I doubt you'll find any as handsome as my neck. I have all sorts of extra flesh around my face. There's a mass of skin under my neck called a wattle. I have wrinkles along the top of my head. There's a stylish red scarf of lumps around my neck. And this isn't to mention the snood that grows on my beak. These fine looking features don't just make us look magnificent. They serve a purpose. Males fight to decide the pecking order. And when we do, we pull at the leathery bits around each other's necks and we may even eat them. Females like a mate with eye-catching dangly bits. And if I'm in the mood to attract a female, I can turn my flaps bright red. What might I be? Turkey, world turkey, of course. Let's play a little game. I'm going to read a couple more examples from our book. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. Let's see if you can guess. Okay, listen up. Weird ears. If you're lucky, well, you have to be lucky to spot me. We fly at night and we hang out in dark places like forests and caves and old buildings. Children can sometimes hear us, but most adults can't. We actually scream louder than a rock concert but we call at a very high sound frequency, and that means many animals don't hear us. It's so loud, we have to squeeze shut the muscles in our ears so we don't deafen ourselves. My enormous ears swivel and wiggle and can pick up the soft flutter of moth wings. And when I fly, I use something called echolocation. I make calls that bounce around, and my ears turn the information into a sound map. That way, I can see in the dark. And when I rest, I fold my ears away and I uncurl them again when it's time to hunt. Do you know what I am? Have a guess. You can write your comments in the Facebook comments box if you like. Well, here's the answer. A spotted bat. Let's have a look at some peculiar tongues. Well, this one, again, you can guess and I'll tell you at the end. This animal has a tremendous tongue, but you might not want her to lick you with it. It's smothered in hundreds of backward pointing spikes. This means this cool animal can scrape away the fur and the feathers and every last scrap of flesh on her prey. Her multi-talented tongue also helps her, her heal wounds and it's perfect 
from combing the dirt from her fur. Luckily, she can always flatten the barbs if she wants to give a, a friendly lick to a family member. Might she be? Some Archon Tiger. Have a look at those spikes on that tongue. These drawings are all by Sarah Edmonds, who, who illustrated the whole book. We'll have a go at one more. This one here, when I can find it. Again, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to read it out, see if you can guess, and I'll tell you afterwards. We're in, we're in the eyes section. Well, this animal definitely doesn't need glasses. Her wide eyes make her an expert hunter in the dark. Like other animals of her kind, she doesn't have eyeballs, but she has long tubes in her eyes, a bit like binoculars. Eyes this shape work astonishingly well. They don't move in their sockets, but these animals can swivel their heads, they can bob up and down, and they can actually spin their heads almost all the way around. And what's more, each of their eyes has three eyelids that go up, down and across. What might she be? This is the spectacled owl. Can you see her markings? They look a bit like she's wearing glasses, doesn't she? And that's why she's called the spectacle owl. But she really doesn't need glasses. She's such good eyes. Further down the page there, can you see this? This is a, a blue iguana and it has a third eye on the top of its head. The eye is used for looking up at the sky and telling the iguana's brain lots of useful things. The eye acts like a clock, it acts like a compass and a calendar. And it also senses shadows of attackers, telling her when to run away. I don't have time to read you everything in this book, but there are very many more peculiar things to discover in the wild. Did you know, for example, that some animals have ears on their knees, eyes on their bums, and they can smell with their feet, and some animals breathe through their tails? I'm going to tell you in a minute how you can win a copy of our book. But first, have you ever felt a bit different to other and to others in some way? Have you noticed that we're that we are all a bit different, really, aren't we? Some of us have very some of us might be tall or small or have very good eyes or be able to run fast or have some am amazing imagination or a clever memory. And some of us are good at listening to others. Some of us are really great at knowing what to do when others need our help. Some of us are still finding out what our special skills are, but we do all have them. So I want to tell you about one more freaky animal from our book. It's the human. Humans have very many incredible creature features. We have tongues that talk complicated languages. We have fingers and thumbs that can do skillful things like make tools and play music. And most extraordinary of all, we have big brains that work in ways that no other animals can. We've used our super clever brains to develop transport, music, science, art, stories, and ways of sharing them around the world. We no longer grow fur all over our bodies to keep us warm. We're clever enough to be the one animal that has made that makes fire to stay warm and wears clothes. But are we quite as smart as we think? The cleverer we've tried to be, the more we seem to destroy wildlife around us. One million of the eight million wonderful, diverse species living on Earth are at risk of extinction because of humans. And this includes many of the an amazing animals in this book. So would a truly clever species be destroying the wildlife needed to support life in its wire only home? It doesn't have to be like that. You have special human features. 
you can use them to care for wildlife and to share your love of wildlife with others. You can use your skills to learn more about our amazing animals and find ways to help them survive and thrive. So, it's over to you. Maybe you can start by drawing some of your favorite wild and fabulously freaky animals. And you can share them and show everyone around you how important they are. And I'd love to see your drawings. So this is our competition. Fantastically freaky art is what we're after. Hopefully you've got a pen or a pencil and some paints and some paper there. So why not get started now? Send us a copy of what you create. It can be a real animal or it can be a made up one. And have a think about what fabulously freaky features it would need to live. So imagine where it lives, it might live up a tree, so it might need to stay camouflaged, and how will it catch food? What superpower features would it need? Or it might live in the desert where it's hot and dry. How will it get water? How will it stay cool? Or perhaps your freaky feature animal lives in the ocean where there's strong currents and lots of predators, and it can't see very far. So how will it hear and see and find the food? Have a think, get creating, Send in your creations to Storytel and the winning artwork will win a signed copy of our book. You've got a whole week to do this. The deadline is the 30th of October. And this is, I'm sorry, this is only for UK people. So thank you. And I hope that you've enjoyed this, this little talk. Um, I hope it's inspired you to think about being creative and help, helps you to be more interested in wildlife. And if you'd like to find out more, Funny Bombs is in shops and it's also in libraries. Um, and finally, I want to say a big, big thank you to Ellie and Kate from the Storytel team for organising this wonderful festival. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Alex. That was brilliant. We learned so much about teeth in bottoms and tongues that can comb and folding ears and three eyelids. Craziness just shows how much diversity there is out there. And like you say, how important all those features are for those animals to survive and how different we all are and how we need to look after each other because we are all on this planet together, which has been part of the theme of this year's Storytale Festival. Um, you may have noticed that a lot of our events have been about nature and wildlife and the importance of looking after it. Uh, and partly linked to COP26 and partly because it's something that we care about as well. So I hope that's inspired you to think about what's out there around you, what wild animals there are, what we need to do to look after our planet, whether it's growing seeds and plants like Oscar in his Tower of Flowers or looking after the woods like Shrew with the flu or thinking about the resources that are around us in the wild like the Nettle Princess and of course all the brilliant funny bums and freaky beaks that are out there as well so thanks again this is our last event um this is storytale 2021 so we are hoping that there will be storytale 2022 uh, and to help us get there we will need your support so please follow us on social media on twitter instagram facebook sign up to our mailing list to find out what's going on what's what we've got planned um, and spread the word as well. You can also watch our events on our YouTube channel. So if you want to watch Alex's or any of the other events that have happened in your own time, then don't forget to, ch to check on there and um, you can watch at your leisure. So obviously joining with Alex's competition, because it's a great one, it's such a lovely book, so much packed into that book, um, so much to learn. It's a great competition. And also remember that if you have left comments on this event or others, then your name will get into a hat to win a couple of other books as well. So thank you for joining us. It's been fantastic. We've had an absolute blast. Thank you, Alex, for taking part your first time, no, second time, isn't it, that you've been part of Storytel. So really honored, thank you. And uh, hopefully see you all in 2022. All right, take care, bye.